Live at Capitol Hill, you can see the light on the top. That means they're still there. Uh, the Senate is working through some nominations, uh, some judges. They're still in session, uh, but the agenda seems stalled overall. Um, Wall Street Journal opinion piece by Kim Strassel. Mr. Biden's stalled agenda is no one's fault but his own. The result of an epic miscalculation of his mandate and votes compounded by Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer's and Speaker Nancy Pelosi's mismanagement of the process. The Biden team bought into those early comparisons to Franklin D. Roosevelt, though the historians apparently failed to remind them that FDR had huge Democratic majorities. Let's bring in our panel, Charles Lane, opinion writer for The Washington Post, the aforementioned Kimberly Strassel, member of the editorial board at The Wall Street Journal, and syndicated radio host Hugh Hewitt. You know, Kim, I, I, reading what you wrote there, it's amazing to see all the stories that say one senator is holding up the Biden agenda, but really it's 51 senators that are holding up the Biden agenda <laughs> in that Republicans and Joe Manchin, and there are probably others on the Democratic side as well. Yeah, and it's a president's job to do the math, and they should have done that when he first came into office. But the problem here is that they uh, misread their mandate, and then they very much misjudged those numbers and Joe Manchin. He's been incredibly clear since July exactly where he stood. They could have came to him and got a deal at any time. Instead, they decided to ignore him and push ahead, and this is what you get. You know, Hugh, I have Senator Manchin on Fox News Sunday this weekend, a lot to talk to him about. But how do, do you think they get themselves out of this cul-de-sac that they're in legislatively? Uh, I think Senator Manchin, I'll be interested to hear that conversation, Brett, because he's been clear the whole time. One point seven five trillion in one time spending and the Democrats wouldn't take yes for an answer. The only way to get out is actually to meet his mark. And I'm not sure they will meet his mark because it would mean a, a collapse of the progressive caucus in the house and much gnashing of teeth. So I'm thinking that that's gonna be a newsy interview because I, I hope he will stay on that 1.7 because they're not gonna come meet him halfway, Brett. Chuck? I kind of agree with Hugh's analysis of the future. And as for the recent past, the other thing that happened was inflation, that they didn't really bargain on that sticking around and turning into an independent reason uh, that was very much on the minds of the general public for Manchin to resist this bill. Here is uh, President Biden on Omicron uh, spreading. It's here now and it's spreading and it's going to increase. For unvaccinated, we are looking at a winter of severe illness and death for unvaccinated. For themselves, their families and the hospitals, they'll soon overwhelm. Earlier in the show, we had Dr. Sapphire really plain speaking uh, about some questions. Hugh, it is amazing to see some different places handle this differently, going back to lockdowns in some situations. Disaster for children. With uh, Chuck and I were talking in the green room about the fact that Prince George's County outside of Washington, D.C., announced they're going back to uh, long distance learning. That's, that is in contempt of the children they are charged to take care of. This is 70 times more contagious than Delta and far less severe. It is no excuse to shut these schools. And if they do, there will be a blowback that they are not ready for on the Democratic side. And I think the political calculations, Kimberly, I don't think have factored in to a lot of these folks. Some Democratic governors are going the other way on these mandates. Oh, yeah, because look, people are beginning to understand we can't keep doing this forever, okay? We now know that this is going to become an endemic disease. Uh, most people have learn are learning to live with it. And these constant kind of alarms, the lockdowns, the warnings from the White House, which seem to be missing reality, are beginning to really grate on people. And the worry for the Biden administration is there begins to be pushback to all of this, including even things that are important public health measures. But Chuck, you can't get away from that number, 800,000 dead, um, and it just is overwhelming. It is scary. I think the most important fact we're going to learn in the next month is the ratio between infections and severe and or fatal cases of this new Omicron variant. If it turns out to be a favorable ratio, then I think everything Hugh and Kim have been warning about uh, is, is going to come to pass in the sense that people will resist the lockdowns. So let's all hope, just for the sake of everyone, that it will be a favorable ratio and we can continue normalizing uh, our lives. One of the questions we read, Hugh, was this thing about the different teams, the NFL, NHL, NBA, at vaccination rates almost 100 percent, 97-ish, and still seeing COVID outbreaks in all of those places. 
Well, yeah, I, I, my uh, winner of the week and loser of the week includes the loser of the Browns. They've had 20 players go on to the COVID list, Brett, and that's because and they're all vaccinated. Brett, uh, it's it's incredible. Washington football team, the Rams, the NFL has been slow on the uptake. These numbers are horrific in terms of the 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 infection rate. We're just lucky that most people seem asymptomatic in the professional sports league and hope they remain that way on all the other walks of life. All right, so that is your loser of the week, the Cleveland Browns with the 20 players. What's, who's your winner? Oh, the boss, uh, New Jersey's own Bruce Springsteen. Sold his uh, musical catalog and his masters to Sony for three, uh, 500 to $600 million, which is a 30X multiple. Uh, usually it's about an 8X multiple for that kind of sale. He's doing it in this year, some people speculate, because in the event better Build Back Better comes back, it would have been another 8% in taxes next year, and the 20% rate he pays on it this year would be gone next year. The, uh, the boss didn't get to be the boss by being a dummy. Good day for him. <laughs> yeah, I'd say. All right, Kimberly, winner and then loser. Yeah, so my winner is Pfizer's new COVID therapeutic pill, uh, a remarkable piece of innovation which could mark a turning point in this pandemic. My loser, San Francisco Mayor London Breed, who uh, just this week announced she's suddenly going to get tough on crime, but this was the same person last year who was among those rallying for defund the police. That was quite an evolution. Uh, Chuck, winner and loser. Well, my winner is the person we've been talking about, Joe Manchin, because he has stuck to his guns through all these months, and he's held his line and he's achieved his purpose, which is to prevent the passage of a bill he doesn't want. My loser is Richard Sackler, the former boss of uh, Purdue Pharma, and those members of his branch of the Sackler family who now face personal liability if a uh, federal court ruling overthrowing the settlement that would have insulated them in the opioid uh, crisis had, uh, had been upheld. I promised that we'd talk about Afghanistan in this lightning round, and we, and we jumped around to winners and losers. But, Hugh, at this number at 62,000 of Afghan allies, some of them interpreters who worked alongside our troops for uh, more than a decade, now still on the ground, after all we've seen about Americans, it is quite a story. It's a scar on America. It's a scar on President Biden, of course. But we guaranteed these people return flights to the United States. We guaranteed their safety, the safety of their families. And we've broken our word. We've broken our bond. I think John Androzik, you've talked to him about the blood on our hands uh, uh, song that he's put out there. It resonates still with Americans and especially Afghan veterans. We turned our backs on people that we promised we would new not do that to. And it will not be a mark that will leave us. All right, panel. Thank you very much. Make it a great weekend. We'll see you.